Hi there, Jack McLean here from Prepare Like a Pro and firstly, happy Easter for everyone listening into the live YouTube channel on Sunday and if you're listening in the podcasting world, happy Easter, um, happy Easter Monday. This week's key topic will be for strength and conditioning coaches. I will be providing my best five tips for running your own online business, both from a coaching perspective, but also to create your business. So from a financial marketing point of view as well. So make sure to stick around. Our power tip for the footballers will be a recent master's project that I did uh, for my applied sports science degree uh, was on AFL midfielders. And I thought it'd be good to share my findings uh, and what's latest in the scientific research when it comes to AFL midfielders. So if you're a midfielder or you're working towards being a midfielder in the Australian rules football, then make sure to stick around. I'm going to provide some power tips from uh, my research. If you're new to the YouTube channel, please subscribe um, to never miss an episode. We host live episodes every Sunday at 6 p.m., as well as a live interview with a guest either in the Australian Rules Football League or in the High Performance Sport uh, every Friday at 8.30 p.m. So we release epic content every week as well, such as exercise technique videos, uh, workout uh, templates that you can follow from home uh, or on the field, uh, and little snippets of our all the podcast interviews that we've done, so we condense them into six minute episodes. So if you're listening to the podcast and you haven't seen our YouTube channel, just search for Prepare Like a Pro. We'll add the links in the show notes. Now for the strength and conditioning coaches, my best five tips for those running your own business or you want to create your own small business. So number one, build a team. I've hired coaches all around the nation to help bring Australian rules football standard strength and conditioning to everyone across. Um, the country, no matter your footy journey. Um, so that's a really important value. Obviously, I can't train everyone. Um, so making sure that there's a you've got a team of coaches that can um, mean that you can have access and, and availability for more footballers uh, or whoever your clients are. I also have hired five virtual assistants. So um, for me, this is critical. That they all have strengths that I don't have, such as website design, marketing, um, and uh, administration, things like editing the podcast. So um, so I can dedicate my time to my strengths, which is program design um, and focusing on coaching the athletes that are on our individualized program, as well as supporting the coaches if they ever need it. Um, so that's my focus and my big three rocks. And by having five virtual assistants, um, I'm able to obviously make a business, number one, so I can't afford to have five times a full-time employees from Australia, but by having virtual assistants from abroad, um, I'm able to get a chop out so we can um, have our marketing um, and have our website um, and also provide really good scheduled content um, consistently. So I find having a team is is number one. So if you haven't got a team yet helping you out, um, definitely start to, to look into building one. My number two tip would be have a schedule. So consistency um, of providing quality content is really, really important, both for your current members, but also for those that maybe you're trying to attract into the business. So from a marketing perspective, consistency is key. It's a super competitive industry in strength and conditioning. So you want to make sure that you're um, staying relevant by consistently producing good content. So I find having a content schedule helps me and um, my uh, virtual assistants all stay on the same page. Um, we just use Excel spreadsheet uh, or Google Sheets and Google Docs um, to be able to communicate with each other. We use Slack and that allows us to stay on the same page even though we've got different time zones uh, and then we'll catch up um, every so often on Zoom so we can have that face-to-face -face connection and, and um, brainstorm how we're going to go about uh, our certain phases that we're in within the calendar year. So having a schedule is really, really important for you and your team. Um, like I said, consistency is key, um, but also from a quality point of view, so you can have your audience in mind. Um, that's really, really important, uh, I think, by having a schedule and a theme to what you want to get out of um, your week. Number three, tip number three would be create a resilient business model. So this is a big learning of mine um, with covid suddenly face-to-face -face coaching wasn't possible. So having a resilient business, what I mean by that is you've got different models for people that want to work with you maybe around the country so they can't see you face-to-face. -face. So being online, having digital products would be one. 
um, having a program that people can follow. So a generic program that's a little bit cheaper than your individualized coaching because not everyone can afford um, or maybe they don't even really need, they don't need uh, everything to be specifically designed for their goal, but they might need something that, that is AF football specific, for example, and they want to gain muscle. So it's still relatively personalized, um, but it's at a price that they can afford um, over a sustainable period of time. And that that's where you're going to see the results is what, um, by meeting their customers' needs, something that they can stick long enough to be able to see the results. So ultimately, everyone's winning in that circumstance. So don't just have a high ticket price item like coaching. Try and have your middle and, and low ticket price offer. Prepare like a pro. We've got individualized coaching, which is two forty nine a month, which includes four week program and a coaching session. We've got a online program, which is ninety nine dollars a month, and we've got four streams under that underneath that. So development for the youth. Gainers for those who want to gain muscle, reducers for those who want to reduce body fat, and maintainers for those in a good position with their body composition. They just want to focus on building their athleticism. So it's still personalized, like I mentioned. They've got their all their lifting numbers in Team Builder, so it's percentage based in the gym. And then the off season, pre season, we provide um, mass targets, maximal aerobic speed, by testing them either in a two k time trial or a P one k as whatever the benchmark test that they do at their club. Or if they don't, then I provide them with the 2K time trials, um, one that I like to use. Uh, and then we've got our academy. At the moment, that's through Patreon. It's $20 a month. So for those that don't want a program like strength and conditioning coaches and they want to catch up with our weekly or monthly Zoom meetings, ask questions, how to uh, work in elite sport or how they can better um, create a better business, um, and then the athletes as well that may not want a program but they want access to our knowledge base um, and, and have that out, outcome focus where they might be wanting to get fitter, get stronger, um, drop um, body weight, whatever it might be, and they want access to uh, all the presentations that we do. Um, so our academy is about to uh, have its own website, own login as well, so it'll be a membership-based platform, and there is a wait list. I'll, I'll, find, I'll discuss that a little bit further on um, where we'll have a footballers option as well as a strength conditioning option. So we want to provide more information and more content for strength conditioning coaches out there. So number three is create a more resi resilient business model. Number four, don't rush things. It, it's a slow burn building your audience. Um, you want to make sure you're serving your current clients, the ones that are paying you, and then also having some energy for those that new to the business, so marketing, um, and making sure you, you're developing your overall audience as well, helping those that are engaged in your brand um, so take your time. Uh, an example of this would be, let's say you haven't got any social media, create all your social accounts that are connected to your brand name. So you've got those and then just focus on one and do a really good job of that, like Instagram. So you create your TikTok, your Twitter, your Facebook, your YouTube, your Instagram, but you pour all your energy on Instagram. Get to that to a really good point. Learn all the things that you'll learn. Uh, it's a steep learning curve, or it was for me anyway, and then you'll be really efficient with that one. You've built a bit of an audience. It'll start to work for itself, and that's where you can pour your energy into another one, uh, and that's something that uh, I, I've done, and I feel like it helps. So we do want to be um, in all different places because you may have all different types of audiences that like to use different platforms, but just focus one at a time and to top them all up and get them to a good point. Another one, that's the socials. Another one might be for searchable content. You might not have a podcast, so start with a blog and start creating some good content with your blog posts so you're searchable on Google that way. And then a podcast may come later if that's something you're interested in. Number five, lastly, collaborate. So those in your field, but also those outside of your field. So like at Prepare Like a Pro, I'll collaborate with strength and conditioning coaches that work in Australian rules football, uh, but also those that work in A-League, work in um, basketball, work in rugby, uh, anyone that works in high-performance sport will we'll catch up with. And then also those that are outside of the, my scope of field. So uh, dietitians, sports psychologists, um, tactical skills coaches, uh, players themselves. So we try and make sure that we're collaborating with everyone. And the beauty of that is you'll have plenty of fun. You'll learn a lot yourself and you'll build some good connections in the industry while boosting your brand because you're not always just um, talking in front of your own audience. You're actually reaching other audiences that are coming to you. So highly recommend uh, collaborating wherever you can. That could be with giveaways or um, like we do the, the monthly collaborative events where we're uh, interviewing up to five guests at a time on a specific topic. 
So hopefully those five tips help all the strength and conditioning coaches out there that are trying to better themselves, build an online business. Um, and if you have any questions or queries, make sure to reach out. Instagram is the best place. Otherwise, you can email me for more of a uh, detailed conversation. More than happy to get on the phone as well and have a chat uh, at jack at preparelikeapro.com. This week's power tip is on Australian rules footballers and specifically the midfielders. So I'm just going to go over to my report now and read some key highlights from this finding. So as we know, the AFL midfield position demand um, can change due to many factors and dimensions such as the ground, rotations, weather, and even if the player is playing inside to outside, you, you, your load can change a great deal. However, there's some similarities when you compare it to, to like full forwards or key defenders uh, and ruckmen and the like. So we're going to focus on the midfielders today. This sport profile will dive into great detail about the recent changes in the demand for an AFL footballer. Um, the game is only getting faster, and that's really important for developing footballers to understand. The game is getting faster. The game is also uh, more demanding in how far you have to run. So the volume is increasing. So intensity is up, volume is up. But the time of the game, the time of the um, quarters is staying the same. So density is a lot higher in the load on the body. So we want to make sure that your aerobic capacity is at a high level. Your repeat acceleration is at a high level because there's lots of stop start with the nature of the stoppages. Uh, and the way that the game is played now with the chaotic nature of, of forward momentum and um, and counteract running from back straight to straight to goals. So that's where the midfielders run at the most intensity is when there's a turnover uh, and they're going from their um, back defensive 50. So you want to make sure you've got that repeat acceleration. However, we also want to have an individualized approach, approach. So there was some research on recovery in Australian rules football and more your aerobic capacity-based athletes. So if we do a 2K time trial and we do a repeat acceleration, like a 0 to 20 meter test, and we do a few of those, and we find out from the group out of our midfielders we've got more our aerobic beasts, so those that can run all day, and compared that to our anaerobic beasts, so those that are super fast, our anaerobic athletes, the research shows, need need a little bit longer recovery from the game. So their Tuesday session, if that's your T1 or your Monday session, however your program works, if you're more of a dynamic speed-based player, um, then you might need a lighter session early in the week and then you want more intensity later on in the week. So you start down and you build yourself into your, into your week. Where an aerobic athlete tend to do better from getting more work in over the whole week. So you you want to try and get um, the main session in on the Tuesday and you and then the main session on the Thursday and maybe if you need a bit more because you're super elite with your fitness and you feel that helps your uh, ability to prepare for the upcoming game, then you could add in a little bit extra cross-training or maybe just a, a flush run early in the week to ensure that you're ready for, for the upcoming game. So know which type you are. Obviously, in our game, because you need to be both, some people can be a bit of a hybrid. So just take note of how you feel energetically early in the week do you feel pretty fatigued uh, typically early in the week compared to feeling fresh and feeling like you could get to work? So that's the physical side of things. Mental side of things, really hard to find the research on um, psychological um, performance enhancement for AFL midfielders specifically. However, there was some findings on AFL football and that um, the behaviour of certain teams can be judged through watching um, – the notational analysis, so video analysis, you can see if a team is more defensively mind um, mindset and defensive mindset by closing in on the ball opposed to those that are holding their width and, and preparing for um, the game to be more open-ended. So observing that, you can see the attitude of the team and the players. Um, there's also a wide range of psychological reactions to injury and typical AFL players are reported depending on if it was a short-term injury compared to a long-term injury. Um, the attitude can change a whole range. So if it's a short-term injury, most AFL players just think that's part of the sport. Um, so uh, it's almost part of the trade, it's part of the job, and therefore they, they cope with that quite well. Whereas a long-term injury, they've reported to have stress and anxiety around losing uh, so contract negotiations, getting back into the senior team, losing form and the like. So um, makes sense. Short-term injuries... 
you're not going to you're not going to lose too much out of that. Where the longer term injuries, there's a lot more angst around that. So, as practitioners working in sport, we want to make sure that we're um, making we're we're understanding that there could be a bit of an emo- emotional roller coaster for those athletes that are um, going through long term um, return to play. There was also a report on feeling disconnected and lonely uh, from the club, uh, losing skills and losing fitness when getting back into playing. So from those angles, we want to make sure that if you're in rehab at the moment, make sure you're keeping up your craft, you're keeping up your touch, uh, working around your injury, of course, but keeping your hands on the footy, really, really, really important um, to keep you sharp and keep your skills up during your rehab. Um, you, if, you're, if you're rehab, maybe you might, and I've seen this done at Hawthorne, you involve the, a coach that helps out with the rehabilitation from a skills point of view. So that a tactical skills coach actually is part of the rehab process in the acute stage. To, to not only give the rehab, rehab uh, practitioner a bit of a chop out, um, but that way the players are getting connected to the coaches. They're not just working with the physios and the strength and coaches, but they're actually working with the coaches as well to make them feel connected in that space. And then from a player's perspective, to make sure they're connected to the main group uh, and any chance that you can to integrate the player who's in rehab with the main group, whether that be warm-ups, craft sessions, games, in the gym, whatever it is, uh, as long as it doesn't affect their injury, of course, um, we want to try and get them back to training with the main group so they don't feel as disconnected. Uh, so that was the main takeaways from my findings on the mental side of things. Going over next into the tactical side, field location is key. So understanding that midfielders work the hardest, their high speed running and sprint distance is typically done when um there is a turnover in the defensive 50. So think of a intercept mark um, or um, you the, the team have had a turnover in, in the back half. That's when the forwards um, will run uh, – sorry, the midfielders will run the hardest when there's a turnover because they know that that's the easy, most efficient time in the game to be able to kick a goal. So midfielders need to be able to cover the ground and go from stoppage to stoppage because the rules have changed where there's less time to set up in stoppages. So you need to be able to cover that distance and have that aerobic side, but also you need to have that repeat speed and repeat acceleration to be able to help your chance of your team to kick goals and kick more efficient goals where where the team um, is more likely to be able to score effectively um, when there's a turnover. So that's from a tactical point of view. And then from a technical point of view, no surprises here. Um, Effective kicking is really, really important. Uh, inside contested uh, handballs, really, really important. And then also understanding body position inside the midfield. They're the, they're the big three that the statistics as well as um, questionnaires from AFL players have come back to the, they're the big three that um, midfielders need to be really strong at, both from an individual performance but also for a team performance. So make sure that's where the kicking event is super helpful and um, you want to work on your kicking Uh, It's an incredibly important part of the game. Skill is king for football. So making sure uh, that you're getting your kicking development in, but also your handball. So handballs, uh, some midfielders can handball two to three times more than other lines, forwards and backs. So you want to make sure that you're getting plenty of your craft in of your handball and you're really effective in, in close contested situations where there's not a lot of space. And then in terms of the body positioning, not just doing all your strength work and, and relying on the gym, but make sure you'll be able to transfer that onto the field by practicing, uh, using your hips, using your, your upper body strength, your, your, your trunk strength uh, with another body. So practicing it specifically in positions that you would find yourself on the field. Hopefully that helps for all the midfielders listening out there. Um, if you have any questions or queries on my findings, make sure to reach out. Otherwise, um, we'll continue to present on certain areas of the game we've got key forwards and key backs so key position players coming up in the next week or two so stay tuned if you know we're going to make sure that we cover every position uh, including the ruckman as well so stay tuned if, you, if you're not a midfielder or you're not a running base player i'll definitely get to you at some point in the next couple of weeks really excited to have our prepare like a pro academy um, we're, we're doing some hard work behind the scenes developing a new website um, it will be for footballers, but there will also be a membership for strength and conditioning coaches. For the strength and conditioning coaches, we'll have practical knowledge to develop your coaching in high-performance sport while developing a business so you can um, make a good living in this industry. 
This knowledge base contains worksheets, online courses, and a community of like-minded individuals. The Prepare Like a Pro Academy will help you make an impact in elite sport while making a living doing what you love. So if you want to join the wait list for the Academy, it is live. We'll add the link in our show notes. And by joining the wait list before July, before our start date, you'll get a free month on the Academy. So you'll get full access to our knowledge base as well as some live webinars that we're going to have exclusively through the Academy. And the Academy is also going to have its own private link for a podcast. So you'll be able to listen to all the presentations, all the webinars, all the courses via the Academy um, private uh, podcast. So if you're interested, if that's something that you think would um, work well for you, head to the link in our show notes, sign up for the wait list, and I'll be emailing everyone some more information uh, as we get closer to that uh, release date. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.